Okay, now once the bark is all uh, attached and uh, pretty much filled, there may be some small places that I'll go back and work on as they, uh, all during the process, little places show up. Little, I notice things like any other painter who, uh, uh, you know, little things you want to work on, uh, certainly, but but uh, mostly it's a, it's a process of stages uh, and in this bark stage, once the bark is all attached, it's still uh, kind of delicate and uh, easily broken. Uh, this is, uh, not all bark is like this, but this particular one that I have to work with now is uh, is rather fragile and uh, it really needs a lot of help from the gel to uh, make it strong. So I take the gel and I fill again using this brush with long strong uh, bristles. I fill the entire surface of the, of the uh, bark and uh, this will take, I'll let this dry about a day before I do anything else with it. It'll actually set up in oh, about an hour. It'll be pretty strong. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and paint it. But I like for it to clarify so I can see how much of the natural color I can keep and, uh, and uh, and then at that point, I will, I will actually paint the surface. When we look at some of my finished work, you can see, see how that uh, finishes out. So the natural bark is really providing the texture, mostly. Uh, I will use some of the natural color but since the bark is pieced together, uh, the, the color is uneven and uh, the painting of the surface will unify the colors and, uh, and make the whole thing convincing, believable. Uh, we have this in common with drama. We, we have to ask our viewers to for a certain suspension of belief with uh, realistic work like this that, uh, that creates the illusion of the real thing. So uh, in, in this particular style, we are asking for a suspension of belief. We want to enable that just as you would if you were doing a, a play you enable that suspension of belief that is necessary for your uh, viewer to enter into the, the feeling or the spirit of the thing and not worry about, well, that's wrong or something else is wrong or that's not, you know, working visually or it's uh, bothering me because uh, I know better or something like that. You have to get past that with your... Um, with your audience and uh, so you have to give them some reason to be willing to suspend their belief and go along with what you're suggesting and that's uh, that's why this takes so long this process takes a long time these pieces take a long time they're uh, they're not easy and uh, you can't just throw them together. Uh, they do require a good bit of crafting, if you want to call it that. Uh, so even though they're very rustic in style, uh, I'm very particular about the way they go together and the way they look and, and the detailing. Uh, that, uh, that casual look is hard work. <laughs> so. Um, so that's what I'm doing now is, is putting the, um, I just happened to notice this branch over here. I'll be putting some other branches on later. This branch uh, 
needs to be filled and texturized and I thought I'd just do it while I'm here. Now about got this tree filled, the natural materials will uh, break down over time. We're using this gel to preserve it, to capture it, to encase it and preserve it and protect it from that breaking down process. The gel is, is a, it's doing a lot of jobs. It's, it's the actual glue that holds the whole thing together and it, uh, it is the, it is the encasement that uh, preserves the natural materials. Okay, I'm uh, working on filling up the rest of this bark that's on here. Now, for purposes of this uh, sort of inviting you into my studio while I'm working on this, I have left the top parts of these trees unfinished and I'm going to leave this one unfinished for now uh, so that we can go on to some other stuff. But I'll go ahead and finish this uh, bark that's on here. At this point in the piece, you can see, you can see the, the base paint, which in this case is sky blue. This is aquamarine light, uh, lightened some more with white. Uh, the aqua, aquamarine light, as it comes from golden, is perfect for a wintertime western sky, but most skies are lighter than that. Uh, I like aquamarine for the sky. I always think it's, it's much closer to the natural color of the sky. And then right on that base paint, I've actually painted some details. And they, they are painted just like any other painter would paint them. Then I start, um, I start with, with an applique or a, a collage putting some some things on flat uh, in in a collage method and uh, and going ahead and painting those up so that they're finished because I can't get in there to do it later I have to do it at the beginning stages and uh, see I notice things as we go along here there's there's filling along the side here with this bark that needs to be done and all the way down this tree, there's filling that I will do later with, with some more small bark pieces. So that when I look at my photograph, I, um, I'm outside a lot. I go outside a lot. I spend a lot of time in the forest and I make a lot of photographs. And uh, uh, usually, I'd say 80% of the time, I do my composition with the camera in the field and I'll get one, maybe one photograph that is, is the composition that I want. And, um, and then I have several more photographs of, of this particular uh, detail scene uh, that I use to uh, help me with coloration, to help me with the emotional response to the, to the site to help me with the rhythms of the branches and the way they compose themselves and lots and lots of details. I don't depend upon just one photograph. Uh, I may or may not uh, uh, change the, uh, the composition some in the studio. Very often I'm very, uh, I, I, I stay real close to the composition because I can't improve on nature's compositions. So I make, I make the photographs and, and I have a bunch of them and I work from those. I, I use those to guide me. Uh, and, and then, oh, I meant to say, I take this photograph and I... See, you can't see th this much sky in the photograph, but it's back there. It has to be back there. And all of those details in the back... See, it, it layers. It's a... The background layer, then the first layer of, uh, of uh, plant life, then another layer of plant life, and then, you know, may maybe four or five, six layers to get up to the front, which uh, this piece isn't there yet, 
the front will be the foliage, the, the uh, hemlock foliage will be the, the forwardmost uh, layer. So it's a matter of layering, which is really just an exposition of the uh, of, of a, one of the principal ways of working with acrylic paint. Uh, acrylics are not like oils. Uh, if you're working with oils, you can you can work with a workable paint for a very long period of time. Acrylics are going to dry out, and you can use um, retarder to to keep them workable for a longer period of time. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, I layer the paint, and that means very often that uh, you know you put a, you put a base color on. You, you, with your eye, you can see that underneath the apparent surface color, there is a, a base color that's kind of coming through. So, th and then you put layers on with varying amounts of pigment, so that you can sort of see through them to the to the first to the first layer, and that gives the that gives the work a sense of light, a sense of actual cell structure because in fact when we look at cells uh, we are looking through cells at other cells and you can get that effect with paint. It's easy with oil or not easy but it's uh, it's done with oil. It's done by the masters with, with oil. Rembrandt does that uh, and uh, and you can do that with acrylic and that's the that's that's a wonderful thing that I discovered about acrylic uh, even though it doesn't stay wet and it will dry out, you can put those thin layers of, um, of pigment, thinned, thin the pigment out, use it in a transparent medium, uh, and, uh, and layer color over color until you have built up the uh, the color you want, and you get a you get a very responsive color surface. Um, this is um, this is a matte medium, which uh, I use a lot for that very purpose. I, I can put a bunch of this on my palette and mix in just a little bit of of a um, pigment and uh, put as many layers as I want. And if I get one wrong, uh, I can correct it. And every time I correct it, it gets richer and richer. So uh, mistakes are not dreaded. Uh, they are opportunities. <laughs> okay, I'm about through with this step right here. And now... I want to go back over to the other tree stem and start to actually color it and maybe put some branches on it. And I'll come back and put the bark on up on this and uh, so forth later on. <laughs>